At two different live streams, I have this article pinned, but thanks to time constraints, I decided not to tackle them. Well, thank God I made that decision because this is the sort of article that the more and more I read into them, the more and more I begin to learn new things. So what is the article that I'm talking about? Progressive video game developers are challenging industry of mostly just white cis men. This article looks like a standard news report of some sort, but the more and more I read it, the more and more it shows the mindset of the people who I'm going against, people whose ideas are conflicted with mine. And of course, in this battle of ideas, understanding the mindset of our opponents is paramount for victory. So without further ado, let's begin. Before opening the second annual Game Devs of Color Expo in June, independent video game developer Cat Small took the stage to lay some ground rules. If you're not sure that something is offensive, Google it, said Small, an expo organizer and co-founder of the Brooklyn Gamery, to a steady march of gamers filling the auditorium of Harlem's Schoberg Center for Research in Black Culture. Wow. Just... Just wow. Imagine what you can do with starting a panel with that sentence. Come to think of it, did Total Biscuit cited an Anafam article when he pulled those moves? The introductions were peppered with the hallmarks of a nascent strand of social justice progressivism. Small described the expo as a safe space. Attendees were asked to be inclusive by using terminology with positive connotations and to refrain from using language that labels people. The center's bathrooms were relabeled to be gender neutral. The ID cards dangling from gamers' lanyards include a space to specify one's preferred gender pronouns. Now, let's stop right there. There are a lot of elements that could only come from the most entitled Tumblrites in the room. Safe spaces, literally policing our languages and using their brand of language, gender neutral bathrooms that I can't see how it can be exploited, preferred gender pronouns. Wow, we're off to a good start, ladies and gentlemen. In an industry splintered by identity politics, perpetuated by you, as much along lines of gender and ideology as by gaming skill, indie developers are speaking in crescendos for a more progressive video game culture. Increasingly, some of the biggest game studios in the world are following their lead. Can anybody tell me what's the point of having a more progressive video game culture? What is the goal? What is the aim? Is it to make gaming to be a more inclusive space? I think gaming is already inclusive on the virtue that they're fun to play for everyone. Gaming has this universal language that everybody can understand called fun. That's why you can play competitively with people around the world without you even understanding what they're saying. For the record, progressive is just a label, guys. It's like how anti-fascist or feminism or the ministry of truth are just labels. Just because they sound good doesn't mean they actually are. Tucked against the wall of the crowded main expo floor, a Washington DC-based company called Pillow Fight showcased Ghost of Miami, a murder mystery game described as a visual novel. Pillow Fight's games champion accessibility as well as diversity. Ghost of Miami was designed to be approachable for gamers with epilepsy or visual disabilities by adding text-to-speech features and is being translated to at least two non-English languages. The game deliberately avoids features such as motion control or other hardware that could be physically challenging for some gamers. Ghost of Miami, as I researched, turns out to be a visual novel game. A visual novel game is certainly going to be not very playable for the visually impaired, but this game apparently gives a text-to-speech feature which is very inclusive of them. However, only two non-English languages? That's not very inclusive. The game also deliberately avoids features such as motion controls that could be physically challenging because visual novels are not physically challenging. Its hand-drawn art style is even designed to be accessible to developers. You can be poor and make a visual novel, said Joe Fu, Pillow Fight's owner. That's right. Which is why I should hire some people to make my own. The company's raison de is that there should be more games for people who look like me and people who have different experiences, Fu said, noting that the studio's previous game was in part developed by a transgender woman. Now this is one of the article's most interesting points. There should be more games for people who look like me. I have so many questions on this statement alone, and the more and more I question it, the more and more I begin to learn the mindset of our game dev here. First off, and this is the obvious question, why? Why would you want to make a game about you, or a game of someone who looks like you? What is the purpose of the game? Is this game gonna be fun for people in general, or is it just a way for you to jerk off? Now, there's nothing wrong with jerking off, AVGN jerked off, PewDiePie jerked off, Tony Hawk jerked off. Okay, I should be stopped using that analogy. They make their own games, that's great. 
But the one thing that makes them different from you is that there is a market for their games. AVGN and PewDiePie have tons and tons of fans. Tony Hawk also has fans and also an entire video game franchise. If I announce that I will make a visual novel or an anime, there is going to be a market for that. What about you? What makes you think that there is a market for a game about you or someone who looks like you? You're putting this game on Steam, so you're obviously selling this game. But if the one component of the game that you're focusing on is seeing yourself being represented, then the game is just you jerking off of how awesome you are. Sorry, but you need to prove yourself to be awesome first before you even thought of that idea. You need to be able to gain audiences by making a game that they love. You need to appeal into the market. The problem is your games are not appealing to the market, which is why your games don't always sell well. For just one second to these game developers, stop thinking about yourselves. You're making a product for people to enjoy. If you only think about yourself when you're making these games, you're never gonna earn people's respect and your games will not sell. We want people to tell stories that aren't traditionally told in game space, said Conrad Kraling, a Pillow Fight developer. You think about big gaming titles, these are predominantly white, predominantly male spaces in many cases. So what you're saying here is what makes your game different and unique is that the game does not star a typical straight white man. <sighs> okay then, I'm not exactly complaining that you make it, you make whatever games you want. But keep in mind here, the games that you see that star straight white men, they're not popular because they star straight white men. They're popular because they're good. The gameplay is good, the story is good, it has a lot of fan base. If you're capable of making a game that has diverse characters while still be able to have the same if not better quality than your competitors, that will be amazing. Unfortunately, you can't make a game about your own story and somehow make it sell well. Unless you're a person of interest or an individual that people are rooting for. Unless your game is incredibly good. It's almost impossible to make a game about you or people like you to be popular. You need to be able to compete with the market. The video game market is highly competitive. You always complain that video game is dominated by cis white men. You need to be able to compete with the market. In order for you to even challenge the status quo, you need to be able to compete. But unfortunately, your game is nothing more than self-flagellation. And there's no market for that unless you're really damn good at it. So after knowing that your own work leads you nothing, what you're going to do is to hijack someone else's stage and jerk yourself off in there, thinking that people are going to accept you now. And that brings me to another point. If you read the article yourself, notice that these game developers are talking about making games for themselves or the people that look like them. They're not making video games for gamers or not making games that are fun. They don't do what Reggie said back in E3. The game is fun. If it's not fun, why bother? They just basically say, I am making games about people like me. We need more games about people like me. These indie game developers are making games not for the sake of the audiences. They're making games for themselves. It's not about how fun the game is. It's not about how the audiences will enjoy it. It's all about me. Me, 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 me. I want to make a game about how awesome I am. I want to jerk off. And if people don't like me jerking off, that means they're racist, sexist, misogynistic bigot. And if I decided to hijack someone else's stage and they throw garbage at me because I suck at jerking off, that also means they're racist, sexist, misogynistic bigot. There is so much narcissism, egotism, and self-centered behaviors in here. And the more and more I read this, the more and more I'm astonished. These game developers are making games as an outlet to jerk off. Which is why not a lot of people are buying these indie games. They're very self-centered. You just can't relate to whatever issues or topics that they raise in the game because that's the only sorts of thing that the game devs can understand. If these game devs want to be at least remotely successful, they need to stop antagonizing their audiences, calling them horrible straight cis white men. 
You can't have people respect you if you don't respect them. You can't have people love you if you don't love them. This is basic reciprocation 101, and I'm the last person you should have a relationship advice with. Fu said she recognizes the complaints from some about the injection of identity politics into the industry, but it is because identity politics should be a part of games. Well, good for you. Good for you. At this moment, I'm going to equate identity politics with I, or me, because that's just how these people think. Identity politics should be a part of games, which roughly translates to I should be a part of games. This is their mindset. They just want to be noticed. I have no idea why. You guys wanted attention and yet you haven't done anything that warrants those attention. In fact, the things that you do just make people to get pissed at you. I just want these people to stop masquerading with the identity politics nonsense because even if I agree with identity politics, that's not what they really want. They want to insert themselves in whatever media they can find and gain popularity solely based on their characteristics. You can't gain popularity by the virtue that you have a life, you have a name, and you have a different skin color. You need to do something that makes you popular. All of these horrendous cis straight white male game developers, even if that's true, they managed to gain their position thanks to their efforts in making good games. PewDiePie is popular because he makes YouTube videos that a lot of people enjoy. You can't be popular by making a game about how awesome you are, because you are not awesome. I am not awesome. If I want to be awesome, I have to earn it. I think I basically proved my point. These people are self-centered, egotistical, narcissistic, apathetic, and they want to control the gaming market. The question here is, would you let them? Though perhaps to a lesser extent than their indie counterparts, so-called AAA developers, the game makers with the biggest budgets and teams, are making tangible changes to foster more inclusion in their companies. Take Electronic Arts, EA, one of the largest game companies in the world, which boasts a market capitalization of more than $35 billion. Like other AAA developers, EA has made a conscious effort to launch diversity initiatives, not only in its hiring efforts, but in the games themselves. Honestly, EA doing diversity hires is like hearing North Korea is bombing a city. I don't think I'm remotely surprised at this moment. And by the way, those diversity initiatives, they worked out very well with Andromeda, did they? The mega popular FIFA 16 soccer series added women's teams for the first time in 2015. And just last week, EA took a further step to bring diversity to its games by including the full roster of WNBA teams and players in its upcoming basketball game, NBA Live 18. Sean O'Brien, EA Sports executive producer for NBA, said that diversity efforts played a hand in the decisions. It's our responsibility to do this for all types of people, O'Brien told CNBC. You'll definitely see more of it. On one hand, EA is ignoring the fact that there aren't really a huge market for women's sports, especially women video game sports, unless you're talking about Dead or Alive Extreme. On the other hand, this is EA we're talking about. I shouldn't be surprised they're pulling these sorts of moves. Another developer, Insomniac Games, is taking steps to make their push for inclusiveness more transparent, says Chief People Officer Kerry Deertorl. The company is especially focused on addressing the lack of women in the industry. It is no secret that we are notorious for being a predominantly male environment, Deertorl said. Yeah, and there is an explanation for why it's a predominantly male environment. Read the Google memo that you constantly call sexist. Have you guys read it? You just keep on saying that it's a sexist memo and the writer needs to be fired even though the memo can thoroughly explain in just 10 pages why there aren't a lot of women in tech. In one of my live streams, I tackled this Kotaku article, which is basically Blizzard responding to the Google memo. The only problem is, the situation that happens in Blizzard just proves the memo's point. Here, let me illustrate you. Only 21% of Blizzard's employees are women, wrote company president Mike Morhaime in the email, which a Blizzard rep confirmed to me it is real, and they leave our organization at a higher rate than men. The reason? One, you can read the Google memo and the citations explaining it. Two, you can read the four scientist explanations and why the memo is correct. Or three, here's an article in Psychology Today explaining the differences between men and women's interests. Or here's another article also from Psychology Today. And not to mention, whatever your attempts on putting diversity, it would always fail. Not even Google with its millions of dollars budget can provide diversity. Do you understand? 
So to any company who keeps doing these diversity hires, you're wasting your money. It will not work ever. The only good thing that it does is it gives a lot more money to diversity managers who I don't even know what their jobs are because it sounds freaking monstrous. I think they basically look at people's resume and go, oh, this guy is white. Oh, this guy is black. Let's hire the black guy. Sounds like a scam if you ask me. To bridge the gender gap, Insomniac has participated in external workplace surveys, partnered with feminist groups such as Girls Who Code, highlighted its female employee in the blog series, and attended specialized job fairs to boost the number of female resumes it receives. Digital says her company, with 173 employees, receives close to 10,000 resumes per year. She says the proportion of female applicants, however, only make up about 5 or 10 percent of the total. That's why we're doing more and more to establish ourselves and make sure the world at large knows we're inclusive, she said. Oh my god, the answer is right there. It's right in your face. The proportions of female applicants is around 10% at most because, on average, women are just not interested in those sorts of jobs. My god, so not only you have game developers who are self-centered, we also have game companies that encourage these behaviors. <laughs> This is the only thing that I can say. It's time to stop! No more! At the Game Devs of Color Expo, many developers were explicit about the changes they wanted to see in video games. The industry very white, very white, very cis, lots of men, mostly men actually, said Natasha Charlene Excelsior, developer of the role-playing game Card Witch. And with that comes a lot of cultural problems. Okay, what are the cultural problems? I certainly don't feel that. The majority of my viewers are from America and yet I don't feel any sorts of hostility from most of them. What are you talking about? These problems, according to Excelsia, extend from development teams to target demographics and even to games themselves. Part of being at the expo, she said, is being against those norms automatically, just by virtue of who we are. Excelsia, who identifies as a transgender black woman, said her development team comprises herself, a black man, and two people who are non-binary. <sighs> There's this very interesting comic that I noticed which is very accurate. Huge thanks to whoever made this. This is the evolution of LGBT. It started off simple with us tolerating gay people, then we tolerate trans people, and then there's a time in which we have to tolerate people with multiple genders, and then apparently we also have to influence children with these sorts of behaviors. And they wonder why we don't tolerate them. I'm sorry, but you're at the point in which you're asking way too much. Safe spaces, different pronouns, millions of genders, why should these behaviors be tolerated? It's immature. It's childish. We're dealing with what's supposed to be adults here. I have no issue with trans people. I have issues with people who are asking way too much for me. I can't comply with your pronoun rules. I can't bend my language to your will. I am sorry, the world doesn't revolve around you. You are clearly mentally ill and you should get treatment. If you think I'm bigoted for saying that, I don't care. You can only insult me at that moment. And by that time, I'm going to call a psychiatrist. Go get some treatment. Also, to game companies and tech companies out there, stop tolerating these behaviors. These are incredibly childish. You can't have people grow if they're constantly being pampered with. Stop pampering these people. They're no longer babies. They're adults and they're asking way too much than what they actually need and what people can provide. Seriously, stop this. Before we end this video, huge thanks to Michael Hayslip and Appendy for you are DMS for the pledges on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead, click like button and subscribe for more. If you wish, you can support me on Patreon. And thanks for watching. <laughs>